Hey, what's up everyone, Ollie here. So I wanted to do a video covering all of my photo and video gear that I use to shoot videos and to shoot pictures. So those of you who follow me on Instagram might know that I actually have a second Instagram account called Ollie's Photos where I upload pictures that haven't made it to my main Instagram, mainly because I love shooting pictures of anything and everything, whatever it may be, and I want a place to share them. So I wanted to cover the gear I use, things like the cameras themselves, the lenses, any accessories and lighting, microphones, stuff like that. I also want to thank Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Storyblocks is the place to go to find all of your stock, video, audio and images. It's perfect for content creators and creative businesses. It has a huge library of over 1 million stock assets and it's perfect for anyone looking to save time on shooting their own content or are trying to get hold of content they couldn't otherwise create themselves. You can download content in HD all the way up to 4K ProRes. One of my favorite sections is the animated backgrounds. You can find a ton of cool background loops here. I especially like the abstract category as the footage here can be used for backdrop titles like this. Everything is royalty free for both personal and commercial use. Storyblocks offers a variety of different plans to suit your needs, including their unlimited all access plan, which gives you unlimited downloads to their entire library for an affordable subscription cost. So make sure to check out Storyblocks. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. Right, so before we get into this video, I do want to clarify that I'm not brand loyal. I actually don't care what brand I use, whether it be Sony, Canon, whatever else it may be. All I care about is having gear that does the job for me. The reason a lot of my gear right now is Sony is because I feel like Sony right now are just doing better than the competition. They're making cameras that people want. They're making lenses that people want. They're expanding very, very quickly. And they're always releasing new cameras as well and releasing new updates. So that's why I'm currently in the Sony ecosystem but I would happily jump ship to either Canon or Nikon or other manufacturers like Blackmagic and stuff if I knew that the cameras were right for me. So my most recent purchase is actually the Sony a7C. So I sold my a7 III and I got the a7C. They are essentially the same camera. They're pretty much the same camera, but the reason I went for the a7C is because of the smaller body. I really like my cameras being as compact as possible. Now you can get cameras more compact than this, of course, but I wanted a full frame camera. So this is one of the smallest full frame cameras that you can get right now that just does nearly everything. It, you know, records 4K videos as well. You could easily make YouTube videos with this, especially with the flip out screen that you see here. Being able to have that flip out screen and having eye autofocus, so it's always focusing in her face. This is like a perfect vlogger's camera if you're into doing video, but I'll mainly be using this for photography. I really like the size and with this lens, the 35 millimeter 1.8, it's a really, really good setup. I found it perfect for everyday photography and I'm really looking forward to using this more. I have actually been very tempted by the Leica Q, the Leica Q2 in particular, mainly because that's again, a very compact full frame camera. But the reason I went for this one for now, that is, is because it fits all of my Sony lenses. And I like switching up the lenses depending on what I'm shooting, of course, depending on where I'm going. I do like to do quite a bit of travel photography. So being able to have a lens and a camera that's very small, very light, ideal for carrying around with me wherever I go. When it comes to recording videos and doing YouTube videos, I use the Sony a7S III, which is what I'm using right now to record this video. Absolutely fantastic camera. One of the best purchases that I've ever made. It's very expensive as well. I bought mine for £3,800, ridiculously expensive camera, but it is currently the camera that just does everything. The footage that comes out of the Sony A7S III is just fantastic. It's so nice and easy to grade. I mainly shoot in S-Log3. Being able to just grade that footage, make it look the way I want, it just has that sort of, I hate to say it, but it has a very sort of cinematic, very modern look to it. I absolutely love it. I use my own LUTs. I'll leave a link to them down in the description below if you guys are interested. And yeah, it's just really nice and easy to use. The autofocus as well is fantastic. So if I get quite close and nice to the camera, it'll keep focused on my actual eye. It won't just focus on my face, it'll actually focus on the eye. Being able to just put my hand in front of the lens like so. Just, just amazing camera. It's like the perfect YouTube camera, especially if you're someone who records videos by themselves like I do. I'm just a one man band sort of creator. Being able to have one camera, being able to trust the autofocus, being able to trust the footage, amazing it's well worth the money so now on to the lenses so the lens that i would recommend for anyone who's starting out in the sony ecosystem or any ecosystem actually and you want to get one lens that does it all 
this is the one. I think if I could just have one lens, if I couldn't have any other lens here, this is the lens I'd have. It goes from 28 to 75 millimeter, so it zooms in and out. 28 is nice and wide, it's good for vlogging actually. You can get wider, which might be more useful, but yeah, 28 to 75, this is a 2.8 aperture. The footage that comes out of this lens and being able to use this lens, this is my most used lens by far uh, for photos, for videos. This is definitely my most used lens. And it's very affordable as well compared to other lenses that it competes against. I found myself really loving the 75 millimeter focal length on this lens. When you're shooting at 75 millimeter, there's something about how flat the images look in sort of, it's hard to explain until you see pictures. I'll put some pictures up in the frame. But shooting at 75 millimeter, everything looks really nice and flat and just sort of very magazine-like. That's the best way I can explain it. I just love that focal length. And like I said, if there's one lens that I would recommend, if you can only have one lens and if you're starting out in the ecosystem, whether it be Canon, Nikon, whatever, Sony, getting a 28 to 75 or maybe a 24 to 70, which is the more common focal length, this is an amazing lens and a really good way to start off. The next lens is the 17 to 28 by Tamron again. So this is just the one below from this one. This gives you the wider focal lengths, the nice wide angle shots so that you can get the sort of wide angle vlogging sort of angle you could say this lens i don't use that much but it sort of comes in handy when it comes to shooting things like interiors when it comes to shooting car interiors um, when it comes to vlogging when it comes to shooting house interiors um, when it comes to car interiors especially this is incredibly useful being able to shoot at 17 millimeters and just being able to get the whole car interior into the frame it's fantastic this is definitely more of a sort of um, niche lens, but it's probably the lens I'd recommend if you like doing a lot of vlogging and you expect yourself to hold the camera out in your hand quite often. I think this is a really good lens to go with. It naturally goes very well with the 28 to 75. These two lenses are basically the ideal sort of vlogging video setup if that's what you're looking for. The next lens is the 24 to 1.4, which is actually what's on the camera recording me right now. So the 24 to 1.4 GM by Sony, I got this lens literally just to do A-roll like this. And the reason for that is it's nice and wide at 24 millimeter. And it also has the very, I can't, I can't remember, do you say low or high aperture? But anyway, it has an aperture of 1.4, which gives me the really nice depth of field. So you can see my face is nicely in focus. I'm looking at my monitor. That's probably why you keep seeing my eyes go away. <laughs> But I've got my monitor here so I can see myself. But yeah, my face is in focus, but the background is really nice and blurry, even though I can pretty much reach like the back of my shelf. It's not actually that far away, but it gives the illusion that it's further away and it can separate you from the background really well. This is what I use this lens for the most, to be honest. I don't actually use it for photography that much, but it's a great video lens. It's also great for astrophotography, if that's what you're into, because of that aperture of 1.4. Fantastic lens, expensive. I think I bought it for 1400, something like that. So yeah, it's not a cheap lens by any means, but when it comes to shooting a roll like this, I just feel like it gives me more of the look that I want. I like having very shallow depth of field. I like everything being blurry apart from what well, I actually want in focus, of course. I like that look. But my second most used lens when it comes to photography is actually the lens on this camera, the 35 millimeter 1.8. So this is a relatively compact lens. It's the smallest lens out of all the lenses that I have. And I just love the size of it. You get also really nice shallow depth of field because of the aperture of 1.8. And the 35 millimeter focal length, I feel like it's a really good focal length for just everyday photography. You can use it for pretty much anything. I found it especially good for street photography if you're into that sort of thing. Like I said, I like to do sort of travel photography, street photography. This is the ideal lens for that. If I were to have just a photo setup, not video, if I were to have a photo setup and I was looking for a compact setup, which is what I have right now, and which is why I have this setup itself, this is what I'd have. I feel like this is absolutely ideal and it can easily fit in sort of like a side bag. You don't need a full backpack for this. It's absolutely ideal. I really love this setup. So my final lens is the Sony 90 mm 2.8 macro. This lens is a very, very niche lens. It's a very good lens, but it's a very, very niche lens. The reason I have this lens is because of product videos, tech videos and things like that. Being able to zoom into a subject, get very close up, get those little details, 
this lens is ideal for that. It has optical stabilization, optical image stabilization, OSS written on here. And yeah, it just works really well. If you're looking for a macro lens that can be great for video and photo, I think this is actually one of the best ones. I don't think there is any other one as good as this right now on the Sony ecosystem. Okay, so now onto some of my favorite accessories. So when it comes to on-camera monitors, I have the Port Keys P6. So this isn't the best monitor at all. There are definitely better monitors out there, but the reason I love this monitor is because look at it. Look how, look how thin this monitor is. It's really nice and lightweight as well. It's not heavy whatsoever. It does add a bit of weight once you put a battery on the back, of course, but I like having my camera set up, my video set up, being lightweight as possible. Being able to have this monitor on top of the camera, having a battery on it, and just being able to have a much bigger screen, it's ideal, it's absolutely ideal. Let's get on to lighting. So one of my very recent favorite purchases has been the Godox TL60 tube light. I was looking for a relatively affordable tube light. Tube lights are expensive, especially if you want a good one, naturally, because there's a lot of work that goes into them, so they're not gonna be cheap. But this is definitely one of the more affordable ones compared to other ones that I've seen out there. And it is amazing, absolutely amazing, especially when you pair it up with the app. So there's actually a screen here that you can see that you can use to control it. And then the on switch and off switch is here. So if I turn it on, that's on. And that's actually at only 10%. That's at 10%. You can see how bright that is. But it gives off a really nice soft light. I've been using it a lot on my second channel. I actually just put it sort of above my monitor like this and you get a really nice soft light. It's fantastic, really compact as well. The battery lasts forever. And of course it's got RGB, so you can change it however you like. You can change the brightness, change the colors, whatever you wanna do with it. I've actually just found myself putting it up on a mount above my monitor and then using the app on the phone to control it. It connects really quickly to your phone. You don't have to go into Bluetooth every time to connect it. It just connects automatically and you can control it through the app. The next light is the key light that I'm using to record this very video. You can't see it because it's just out of frame. I was previously using the Falcon Eyes 12T, but I ended up changing to, I think it's called the Soonwell like one by one flat LED light, flexible light. I'll leave a link to it. I don't actually know the product name or whatever, but it's a really small compact softbox light. Ideal for doing videos like this, a key light, having a key light like this. I can change the brightness, so I actually have the module to, to sort of control it right in front of me. But I can change the brightness, make it super bright. But this is currently at 4%. So it goes all up to 100%, but this is at 4% and it gives off more than enough light, especially in a dark room like this, because I've blacked out the room, of course. Absolutely amazing. You can change the color temperature as well. Very compact. I wanted a compact light that I can use in this room because I don't have a ton of space. It doesn't take up a ton of space. It can be used in all sorts of different ways. Love this light, well worth the money. Okay, so I've moved everything out of the way because I wanted to show you the bag that I'm using to carry some of my photography gear. So, I think this might be quite intriguing for a lot of people. So, I stopped carrying a big backpack. I'll carry a backpack if I've got my MacBook or whatever, but if I'm just going out to take pictures or taking video, I'll just carry this. So this is a Bellroy pack, I think, small pack, whatever it is. And yeah, it just goes over your shoulder, goes or you can have it going across. And this is actually big enough to fit my Sony A7C like this, like so. And then I can also fit a 28 to 75, comfortably as well. There we are. I can just take this with me. I have one lens, well, two lenses actually. I have my camera. I can put it on. Actually, I'm putting it on backwards. Lol. Let me put it on the right way. <laughs> so like this, have it on my back, or I can have it round my front, like so. I can whip out my camera, take pictures or whatever, and then put it away. I can also carry other stuff. So in the front, if I open it up, I have polarizing filters. I have two polarizing filters actually for each lens. And I can put SD cards or whatever else I want as well. So it fits quite surprisingly large amount of stuff. If you're someone who's looking for a compact bag where you can fit a camera, a lens, and maybe some accessories, this is really good. I've been really impressed. And at the same time, it doesn't scream, look at me, I've got an expensive camera with me at all. So <laughs> it's nice and compact, nice and sort of understated. I carry a camera and a lens in here and I'll go out taking pictures, whatever else it may be. 
we instead of carrying one big backpack. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is my camera setup, the Sony a7C with the 35 1.8. Sometimes I switch to the 28 to 75 Tamron. When it comes to video, I use the Sony a7S 3 with the 24 1.4 for this video itself. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.